Any questions on the topic of Christ's Lordship and our allegiance to Christ as King? I think Stevie, Stevie, you got a question? I've got a question, but it's not on topic. Uh, <laughs> you won't be surprised. Go on, any questions, Steve? Are you with child? No, I'm just overweight. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? Gluttony is a sin. Any other questions, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? <laughs>
the church. And the reason why Christmas comes from the church is because Christians are permitted in the New Testament to honour any day as a day of celebration so late in the celebration of Christ. Christ was born and late Christians honour Christmas Day as a way of celebrating Christ's birthday. Late December. And the reason why they chose yeah. December the 25th why? is because of a, a, a belief held by the church fathers okay. that Christ had to be born and die. Sorry, that Christ had to be born and die on the same day. And so when you count forward from the time that Christ was crucified, you arrive on the 25th of December, and that was why Christians Easter, celebrate on, Christmas on, on the Easter's 25th Easter's of December. December. But he died at Easter, did he not? Yes! So how's that the same day as Christmas? Steve, I'm as trying that. to take questions from others. Stop trying to hog. Oh, I will like come and debate. Questions. I'll come and debate you, Steve. Any other questions? Christmas, Easter. Winter solstice, spring. Any Christmas other questions? Go on, brother. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, the question is about a Christian doctrine called the rapture. I want to say to you that this idea of the rapture is an American invention that is not older than a hundred years old. It is a poorly formulated doctrine of the American church. It is not universally held by all Christians and it was not held for 2,000 years. Churches that teach it whilst they are still Christian, or teaching something that I believe is an erroneous teaching. There is no doctrine of the rapture in the Christian faith. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? So is it just chance that Christmas is based on the winter solstice and Easter based on the spring? Okay. Is that just chance? Let's, let's just answer that question. The winter solstice is not on the 25th of December. It is before the 25th of December. And the winter solstice was celebrated by Germanic pagans in Northern Europe. The Christmas date was established in the Mediterranean church centuries before so its encounter in the, in the with northern Germanic the pagans. <laughs> so anyone who tells you yeah. that Christmas so pagans, is based on the pagan celebration of the winter solstice okay. is as ignorant as Steve. Okay, let's try the devil. Because, let's try the devil because the, let's the try Christmas the celebration was the established before let's the third that century and the Christians only interacted with the Germanic pagans in the 5th century. So it was centuries separated. Steve is just repeating urban myths. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Where did that come from? What? Define the Trinity. Three, there you go, next question. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked to define the Trinity, which is the central doctrine of the Christian faith. We Christians believe in only one God. If anyone tells you any differently, they are either ignorant or they are lying to you. They are either ignorant, like the Quran is ignorant, yeah. or they are lying to you, like Unitarians lie to you. Christians believe in only one God. But we believe that this one God has always existed as Father, Son, 
and Holy Spirit. No females, you might know. And this the Trinity, this Trinity yeah. is what we Christians glorify and worship, ladies and gentlemen. I invite you to move a bit closer. I invite you to move a bit closer. Don't be shy, guys. It means I don't have to shout my voice all the time. Okay. Any other questions, Where ladies and gentlemen? Where are the women in this bullshit? In the Trinity, yeah. Where the Apart from the surrogate mother. <laughs> apart from the one surrogate mother whose womb God so, needs to borrow. The question, ladies and gentlemen, oh, is Hellfire Christian? The answer to the question is yes. Jesus Christ and his apostles all affirm the reality of Hellfire. Hellfire is the place that upon judgment, those who have rejected the mercy of God will go, and those that go there will receive the punishment due to their sin of re insulting the honor of God and of rejecting the mercy that He has freely given. So, yes, Hellfire is Christian. Bob. Any other questions, Bob, ladies and no gentlemen? Is, is that true? Any, I'm not Tech Stevens trying to dominate. No. You're facilitating. <laughs> Any <laughs> other questions? Go on. Do you have is a question? Okay. Any Hulk? other questions, is ladies? So the question is, what colour was Jesus? I want to say to you that there is no term more insulting than to the dignity of us all than trying to categorize us by something as skin deep as our color of skin. This is a modern practice of modernity that invented the idea of race and ethnicity. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what the colour of Jesus Christ's skin was. I don't believe that he was white like me. And I don't believe that he was black like an Ethiopian. I believe that he looked like someone who came from the Middle East. Someone with olive-toned skin. But, ladies and gentlemen, a unique feature of the Christian faith is that every ethnicity represents Christ in their own ethnicity. If you go to an Ethiopian church, Jesus Christ looks like a black man. If you go to Japanese churches, Jesus Christ looks like a Japanese man. If you go to a European church, Jesus Christ looks like a European. If you go to a Native American church, Jesus Christ looks like an Indian. Why do we do this in our art forms, ladies and gentlemen? Christians do this in our art forms because Christianity affirms and elevates every person's culture. Is your culture African? Well, God says that your culture is equal to the Jews. Is your culture Anglo-Saxon? Well, God says your culture is equal to the Jews. Is your culture Jewish? Well, your culture is equal to the culture of the English. Not all cultures are equal. Unlike oh, Islam, that. that says that the greatest culture is the Arabic culture. Yes. And the best way to be a Muslim yeah. is to start imitating Arabs wow. in what Muhammad did okay. because Muhammad was a 7th century Arab. Okay. And that's why Islam equals Arabization, but Christianity says that your cultures are all equal and we are united 
in the confederacy of the church in which we put the church before ethnicity, before nation, before race, before class, and we are united in our common discipleship in the Lord. Now, Steve, you can ask a question. Yeah, go on, Stevie. We love you, Stevie. It's good, wait. Okay, is hell hot? Is hell hot? Yes. Next question. Too late. Go on. That's my next question. The problem is not skin. He's had more questions than I have. The problem not skin is sin. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Why are there no women as main characters? From someone else. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? About Chris? Christianity, our beliefs, our ethics, our values. Any questions? Why did God Mary's womb for nine months? <coughs> Go on. Okay. So the question is, as Christians, is it vital that we preach the gospel? Yes, of course it is as Christians. However, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make it clear what I mean by this. Preaching the gospel doesn't mean that you have to stand on a street corner and shout like I am doing in this park. In fact, I would want to suggest to you that the absolute worst way that you can preach the gospel in our culture today is standing on a street corner and shouting at people. When Paul preached the gospel, he went to the Agoria, a place where people had debates. Okay. He didn't stand on street corners screaming his head off oh, like with a up. microphone. Yeah. Christians well, have, have fetishized people like John Wesley and the Spurgeons and Billy Graham. We have fetishized and projected in an ahistorical fashion the preachers of the 1700s back 2,000 years onto Paul. And it is wrong. Paul was a tent maker. He used to find employment and he used to preach through conversations. And so what I want to invite you to do, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. especially those of you who believe in preaching and you feel called to evangelize, get yourself a table, make an appeal in your church for good second-hand books, get yourself a sign to stick in front of that table and talk to people, have conversations with people, Take them out for coffee, build relationships, invest time and energy, and encourage your church to be the kind of church that people feel welcome in coming into and enjoying fellowship in. That's how you preach the gospel. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Any other questions on Christianity, customs? Any other questions on our doctrines, our values, our ethics? Go on. Yes. So the question is, how do we know who Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are? <coughs> the reason why we know is because church fathers like Polycarp, Irenaeus, um, what's, Justin Marta, thank you. They name these people as the people that write the Gospels. Mark was the interpreter for Peter, who then went and founded the church in Alexandria, Egypt. If you go to the Coptic Christians of Egypt, they will say that their cathedral seat, the seat of St. Mark, was established by the disciple Mark. The early church knew who these people were. Luke was a traveling companion of Paul. You actually find his name mentioned in the book of Acts. John was an apostle who knew Christ. Matthew was an apostle who knew Christ. And the early church knew who these people were and writes it down in their own traditions. And we, the reason, one of the reasons why we know 
this tradition about who these four people were is so incredibly early is because there is no dispute about it. If someone was just inventing it and making it up in some part of the world, then that would mean that someone else would be making it up in a different part of the world. And then these two traditions, we would see evidence of them arguing with one another about who Matthew, Mark, Luke and John were. But there is no argument in the early church about who Matthew, Mark, Luke and John were. And that shows that the early church was so small at that time and the tradition was so early at that time that there was never a room for a competing tradition to emerge. And that's why we know who Matthew, Mark and Luke are. Matthew met Jesus, John met Jesus. Mark met Peter who met Jesus. Luke met Paul and with Paul met Peter, James and John who knew Jesus. So the Isnad chains of the Christians are shorter than the Isnad chains of the Muslims about their hadiths. If you look at the Isnad chains of the Muslims in their hadiths, it's somebody told somebody who 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 heard Muhammad say. We're all supposed to believe these Chinese whispers. And there's lots of problems with Islamic Isnad chains. Take problem number one. Muslim Shia and Muslim Sunni can't even agree about which Isnad chains are reliable. The Shia rejects some of the Isnad chains of the Sunnis and the Sunnis reject some of the Isnad chains of the Shia. And then the Muslims try to tell us, oh, the Isnad chains are completely reliable if they're Sahih. But the Muslims can't agree what Sahih themselves, so why should any of us believe them when they can't agree? Secondly, there are examples of uh, individuals that appear in the Isnad chain of a Sahih Hadith that also appear in Hadith that are not considered Sahih. So how can you have a name that appears in an unreliable chain also appearing in a reliable chain? Basically, are you asking a question? Because we're taking questions. Go on, if you want to respond. 